Let's have a look quickly. Well spotted, Craig. I couldn't see them at all. So here they come. Look at how heavily full they are. Is that not? That female might be pregnant, actually. Let's go forward a little bit. She does. She looks heavily pregnant. So I wonder where they're going to den this year. Now, she should be coming out just in front of us here. Are you going to stop there? No. There we go. Look. So that looks like the alpha female. You can see her teats are swelling. So she's definitely got little cub, um, puppies on the way. So those won't be too much longer. I would imagine probably within the next few weeks she's going to be starting to display and to drop her puppies. Now there comes the alpha male behind. So you can see while he's not nearly as pregnant he is also full so it would be a bit of a worry if he was pregnant but you can see he's also full so they had a good meal <laughs> this morning so Craig's having a bit of a laugh at me because I said that he doesn't look like the female who's pregnant but the rest will all start filing out now shortly there we go and they just I love when wild dogs start at this time of the day there's a lot of social interactions you'll find them kind of going up against one another sniffing playing there'll be a little bit of sort of jumping on one another and running around now interestingly enough they all seem to be sneezing which is not is a little bit of a concerning sign because sometimes it can be a sign that they have distemper when they sneeze like this so it's not the best thing to be hearing and I'll certainly ask our wild dog researcher Grant who spends a lot of time with the dogs whether or not it is a sign but he has I'm sure he's mentioned it to me if they sneeze a lot that it is can be a sign for that which is a big problem if they do have canine distemper because it is very very um, potent in terms of spreading amongst the pack and all of them will then get infected very quickly so I'll just have to check that when I get back but it might not be I know that they have sort of different symptoms but they are on the move now and they are starting to go so what I want to try to do is keep up with this pack because they soon can disappear but this is exciting it's that time of the day where the dogs are going to start moving for us we're going to see them starting to go on the hunt now the problem is is they're heading in a direction that is not ideal for us because they're going southward follow them for too much longer but this is so cool to see. I love wild dogs. And so many people find them unattractive. I find them very, very cool looking. With these sort of blotchy pattern and the white tails. And the fact that they've all got this unique sort of coloration. It really is an amazing animal for me. I love sort of seeing the wild dogs. And the fact that they are the way that they are. And the way that they move. And their sort of general behavior that they have. They're an exciting animal to spend time with. There we go. It looks like we're all going to lie down a little bit. If only that hyena had arrived now, we would have definitely seen a bit of action between this lot because that hyena would have certainly spotted the wild dogs now. Look at the size of those ears as well. I love the ears. And you see how the ears also work all the time. So much like um, the kudu that we saw earlier today, those ears are all going to be helping in terms of trying to determine what is going on around them and whether or not there's going to be a food source around them or if there's a potential predator they can use all of that to their advantage but I don't think they're quite ready to really start running just yet they're starting to kind of wake up but so Monique from London you're wondering which pack of wild dogs it is it's the Sands pack as far as I know there should be one individual here with quite bad wounds on its back area and around its tail so that should be them and it's definitely the old male is the alpha male from the sands pack that was the second dog that we saw coming out of the bush so it is the sands pack and this is generally the sort of most north eastern um, area of their sort of territory they typically don't go too much further northeast from here sometimes a little bit into Juma but the investic pack is more on Juma before of Torchwood these guys tend to spend more time in the sort of southwest and then central parts of the Sabi Sands itself
So, Susie, you say the alpha female looks as though she's about to pop. Indeed, Susie, I don't think it's going to be much more than a week or two until she pops. And they'll be looking for den sites. So what they do is they go to termite mounds and they investigate the mounds. They'll go and look, they'll sniff around, and she'll keep doing this until sort of a day or two before. And by then she would have decided where she wants to have her puppies. She'll then have them. And then they are pretty much bound there for the first sort of 12 weeks. They'll stay at that den. And the pack will then run from the den itself. Now, if they do den somewhere around here... And now, hopefully it will be around sort of Arethusa area. Then we will see wild dogs every single day for the winter season, which is an amazing thing to have happen. So hopefully that will be the case, and I'll be super excited if it is. Now, I've also heard quite interesting news, is that we came in on a road and came towards sort of this area, and Jamie said she had kudu alarm calling around that area on the boundary with Arethusa and Juma Man. I've just heard somebody's found tracks of a female leopard, which I would imagine is Shadow, on top of my vehicle tracks going eastwards. So if there's anybody in that area, it might be good to let them know, Chantal, that that is probably Shadow walking on the road there somewhere. So the kudu that we're alarm calling it means that it is Shadow in that area. But the dogs are still a little bit sleepy. They're not quite awake just yet. What I might do is just go round to the others and just see if they're not ready to wake up and start moving. And we'll see if we can go and check out that pregnant female and see just how pregnant she actually is. She looks huge at the moment, so definitely not long now. Now, the thing is with wild dogs is that they can have quite large litters. So you'll find sometimes the females will end up having, you know, 18 puppies at a time, which is a serious handful. Normally, the average is sort of anywhere between sort of 6 and 12 that's normal the most that I've ever seen in a pack is 14 which is quite a number of them but I have heard of cases where 16 to 18 dogs have been seen so that's quite a I mean puppies have been seen which is quite a serious amount now look at them they're just lying all over the place here and it's so beautiful with that sun in the background and then this wild dog just lying on its mound there we go isn't that a magical scene so there we go very, very cool. I must be honest, I love spending time with these guys. The problem with them is that because they're so endangered and so sort of rare in these parts, we get this situation where we find that it's a very busy sighting. So lots of people like to come to them and see what's going on with them. So often it can be a little bit of a rush sighting. Now, hopefully they are going to start moving shortly. But I see that none of them are sneezing now, which means there's nothing really to worry about. So I think they're all okay. Maybe it was just a bit of dust. So David, you say, are oh, they not sneezing because of dust from the cars? It could be. So where they are is on the deliveries road to Arethusa. If you actually look in front, you can see the sign with the dog sitting in front of us. So over there. There we go. Welcome to Arethusa. And so lots of cars are going back and forth from this area at the moment. And that means lots of dust in the air. So they could very well be sneezing from that. I've seen now that none of them are actually sneezing at the moment, which means that in all likelihood, it's okay. If it was something like distemper, you'd find that it would be a constant thing and they'd all be doing it non-stop. Whereas now they've all stopped doing it and I haven't noticed any of them sneezing since we've been sitting with them and they've all laid down again. So it could just be from the cars itself. I know I was sneezing earlier as well from all the dust. So it is very, very possible. Look at the female coming. Look how fat she is. Look at how she's shame. She is so, so big at the moment. My girl is a tough. You can see she's even panting. It can't be easy when you're that full as a wild dog. She's more round than she is tall at this stage. She's having a tough time of it. But yeah, that is close, close, close. The teats are even starting to swell. And you know when you start to see the teats swelling, that she's starting to produce milk means that she's not too far away from giving birth. I would say within, like I say, the next week or two maximum, she's going to be giving birth to those. The problem with wild dogs is that that's no guarantee that she's going to be in this area because they move such massive distances that in sometimes she could end up being in a situation where by tomorrow they could be in the southern part of the Sabi Sands and no longer in this area. So two weeks is still a long time when it comes to actually giving birth but hopefully they've found somewhere here that they like and that they're actually going to spend time and utilize this area as a den area because that will just be the most spectacular thing for us as guides we'll be able to see such interesting behavior and there are very few things as cute as a baby wild dog 
I wonder if you can actually see them moving. It would be so nice if she just sat still and we spent some time. And if we could actually see the babies moving inside there, I reckon that you probably could. It wouldn't surprise me. And we've got two that are busy playing around here. So while she waddles off into the sunset, there's a couple of them on my right hand side that are being naughty and busy playing around and sort of jumping on each other. So there they are. And look at that, in that sort of golden light. And so when I was saying just now that a disease spreads quite quickly with the dogs, you can see why. They're always sort of going at one another and touching one another and sort of giving each other, you know, bites and, and licking each other. And so that's why anything that's spread through saliva spreads very, very fast. And part of the reason why their numbers have decreased so much over the last little bit. I wonder, what, is there a tick on that one's eye, Greg, on the one on the right? Can you zoom in on its eye for me? Uh, right hand side? Other one? That one there. Yes, look at the size of that tick on its eye. So, it's no, it's not a tick. What is that? Is it just a marking? H. Macy, you're wondering if the pack did have distemper, would the pups be born with it? Well, if the pack has distemper and they don't get treated, within the next week they will all be dead. That's how bad distemper is for wild dogs. So it's not something that we would well, not something that we would want, but they can be treated for it. Um, and so if they were treated, then no, the pups would not have distemper. It would be a situation where they would be all okay. But I don't think they have it. Now that I'm just sitting and looking at all of them, none of them are foaming, none of them are sort of sneezing too much, and coughing is probably the biggest sign of distemper you'll find that they cough quite a bit and so there's no coughing happening at the moment which means that we are all okay so i reckon these dogs are just fine and healthy with no need to stress there's also a big program on at the moment where they're treating all the wild dogs in kruger and the greater kruger area for distemper and they've done a lot of blood work and they've done a lot of vaccine work and so it seems at this stage that most of the dogs have been treated. I think the Sands pack, which is the pack we're with, was the last pack to be done, and they were done quite recently. So I think all is okay. But look at this dog when it comes alert. Look at that. See that stance and the ears? What have you seen? They always remind me of Mickey Mouse for some reason. I know that they don't look like Mickey Mouse, but just their sort of ear shape. So Lady Starfire, distemper is a disease that is spread by well into canines so you give it it's basically prevalent in dogs more than anything else and how they contract it is because it's we have a lot of communities on the edge of these areas and there's a lot of dogs unfortunately that don't have access to good veterinary care because of the fact that we in an area where we're sort of in a more rural section and there's a lot of poverty out here and so there's stray dogs that wander off and they've contracted the distemper um, from other dogs and they then wander towards the reserve and wild dogs then go drink from the same place that those dogs have drank from or they actually kill that dog and that's how they contract it. It's much like rabies. It's a very similar system to how rabies works. It's just within canines it is so 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 contagious that once it gets into a dog pack it's very difficult to stop it. This is very cool. The light is beautiful this afternoon. But it seems like they're just still quite quite happy to rest for a while. I don't think they're going to be moving just yet. It's kind of one or two of them are restless, but the, there are the majority of them are just trying to take it very easy at this stage. So, our beard, you're wondering if wild dogs would ever approach human habitation. Well, yes, they would. So, wild dogs, we're right at the lodge, as you can see. We're at Arethusa Lodge, so you know all about Arethusa. You stay here, our beard. And so, they literally will run through the lodges. I've seen them, I've heard of them running through villages in parts of Zambia and Botswana. And so, yes, they do from time to time. What are you chewing on? Sometimes find they chew on millipedes, but there's not very many millipedes around, so I'm not sure what it's found itself there. Maybe it found itself some sort of beetle that it's decided to eat. Wild dogs are quite curious, and they'll often do things like this, so it does happen from time to time, where they'll pick up things and chew them and bite them. Are you very aware of what's going on? So, Becca, you're wondering about how many wild dogs make up a pack usually. Well, it depends. I mean, it's obviously these days the numbers of wild dogs are less and less as sort of time has gone on. But um, 
at the, generally in the Kruger system, the average sort of pack size is about 10 dogs, 10 to 12 dogs. There are big packs, so the pack around open at one stage was almost 40, but there are also smaller packs. We see packs here of three individuals, there's two different packs of three individuals, so the average is around 10 to 12 dogs. That would be kind of average for Greater Kruger National Park. In the past, it wasn't uncommon to get packs of dogs that went over 60 at times, so it's just that their numbers have decreased and Unfortunately, in the areas that we're in, particularly in the Sawi sand section, there's just too many predators for a pack of that size to actually do well. You'll find hyenas, lion, leopard, hammer the, the pups when they're younger, and so their numbers just can't grow to that size. Now, there's lots of other vehicles that want to come to the sighting, so I think we, unfortunately, are going to have to leave. I can hear lots of guys on standby, so we're going to probably have our last sort of visuals of these wild dogs before we decide, well, before we allow some of the others to come in. But isn't that a magic scene? Sunsets, wild dogs, really is beautiful. See, they're still busy grooming one another at this stage. Right, so we're going to, like I say, make space for some of the others and allow everybody to experience the wonders of the wild dogs. We've been so fortunate to see them, and the fact that they came out of the thicket and allowed us to see them in this beautiful light is quite something. So while we do that, let's go across to Jamie, who's still meandering in the late afternoon sunshine.